to see like what is the best to way to use machine learning for computer aided engineering optimization problem in order to efficiently solve this problem we introduce additional variables one of them is like a pressure hydrostatic pressure or we can also add deformation gradient itself as an unknown we can add stress the stress tensor itself as an unknown for applications in biomedical if we have these devices interacting with blood flow how how would it affect so these are the i'm currently combining multi physics from the solid mechanic side and then multi physics from the fluid mechanic side and see how these different fields interact with each other talking to people who are already doing it or who are already where you want to reach would be certainly helps don't be shy okay send emails approach them they may not reply so you don't lose anything can we use machine learning there i don't know i don't see like how machine learning can be used instead of some kind of automation so for example you say okay we have round holes or fillets then from the geometry we can know that the optimizing multi physics problem what does it mean well think about how different forces and phenomena interact in the real world for example when designing a car engineers don't just simply consider that how it moves which is the study in fluid mechanics but also how its structure holds up under stress that is fall in the category of solid mechanics but it does not stop here you know they also have to ponder about how these elements work together which is on the other hand known as fluid structure interaction let's break down this further many of you if you have already learned about solid mechanics have little knowledge about these subjects know that the solid mechanics is the study is how solid materials like metals and concrete behave under various forces let me give you an example imagine designing a skyscraper engineers use solid mechanics to ensure that the building which stand everything from the weight of the building itself to the forces of wind and uh, several other natural phenomena like earthquakes now as i mentioned earlier that uh, the terminology fluid structure interaction which is about how fluids and uh, solid structure affect each other for example think think of a bridge okay over a river so what happened in this case is the water flows around the bridge supports and the bridge has to be stronger enough to handle the pressure from the flowing water isn't it so if you think about another uh, application let's say electromagneto mechanics okay so it's about how electrical and magnetic uh, fields interact with mechanical structures application is uh, designing electronic device like electric motors transformers which power many of the devices that we use in our daily lives i am just you are outlining some of the applications so that you could get to know that what we are going to talk today okay now you know there is another fascinating applications of this simulation techniques is in the world of 3d printing which is quite famous these days and has a very promising opportunity in the future as well now the heart of the 3d printing is computer aided design i hope many of you are already familiar with these terms which is which in short abbreviation known as cad it's a very popular technique actually now what cad does is it allows engineers to create detailed 3d models of their designs on a computer these models can be then tweaked and tested in virtual environments before being printed okay now you may ask that why all these things matters well in short we can say that these simulations helps us design 
safe cars, more efficient airplanes, stronger buildings and even better electronic devices. And the important thing is, these techniques allow us to predict how different materials and structures will behave under various conditions without having to build and test physical prototypes. Interesting, isn't it so? You are saving lot more resources, you are saving time, you are saving money. On top of that, you are also helps create more innovative and reliable products. So, our guest today is working in this research direction and I hope you will learn many interesting things about, I mean, in this uh, direction from our today's discussion. So, without any further delay, let us begin our today's session. Uh, thanks, Dr. Channa Keshava, for uh, joining us today. It's uh, really a wonderful opportunity to have a discussion with you today. So, uh, yes, we will be covering uh, lots of different topics about your research, about your journey. Starting with about your journey, so can you please uh, give an outline that uh, how you start your career, you have earned your PhD at uh, Swansea University and then you have applied for some scholarship to how you came your current position. Right. Okay. Yeah. First of all, yeah. Thank you for inviting me on this podcast. It's an honor to be here and discuss about like various aspects like my career and my research, everything. So that, thank you very much. So I have my undergrad and master's in mechanical engineering. And then I was working in GE for two years after my master's. Okay, and then yeah, I I always wanted to do my PhD, but because of some reasons, I wanted to I needed to work. I, but still, like I was looking for PhD opportunities like abroad. I I tried a lot in USA at the time. It didn't work. I tried like for different uh, programs in US, for example Purdue or Virginia Tech. And then I I was exploring different options like okay, why not try in Europe like Germany or like some other, like UK. So I was looking, and then I, I came across multiple opportunities I, to which I, I applied. Some in Italy, some in Germany, and then this one in UK. Fortunately, I was successful at this opportunity in Swansea, and my supervisor like Professor Wolf Detmer was kind enough to. To supervise me in that project and then like I parallelly applied to the gentle scholarship which at the time they were offering 10 scholarships for international students I was lucky enough to get one of them so that's how my academic career started in the year and then yeah, after my PhD I worked as a postdoc and also research software engineer in supercomputing Wales team until 2020 and in like at the end of 2020 that was uh, like during COVID and all so I got my first academic employment at the University of Bolton and then in the middle of 2022 I moved to Edinburgh Napier University as, a, as an assistant professor. So, as you mentioned that you have also worked in an industry. So, uh, how, I mean, how was your experience from industry? You have switched from industry to academic. Industrial experience, I mean, it, it depends on the industry, of course. So, I mean, from when, when I was working in GE, I mean, it was a like was a finite element simulation of GE's uh, like gas turbine components. I was working in GE aviation. So, doing some efficiency stress analysis, fatigue life and so on. And at some point, industry job becomes monotonous but however that job did help me a lot later in my academic career because the tools i learned in my industrial employment like for cat software and series hyper mesh and like other like other tools that really helped me in my phd like if i needed to generate a mesh for my research i could quickly use hyper mesh or some other software and then generate the mesh so that actually expedited my research so it is suggestible that if some students got an opportunity before i mean in an industry before joining a phd so he or she should go take this opportunity and have some gain some experience in the industry it, it depends it, it depends on a lot like it if you get a opportunity straight away take it I mean, there is no point postponing it that, that's what i mean like try for it like for example if you want to go for a phd apply get it if you get it then go for it if you don't get it and look for alternative like you have plan b go to industry work there for few like one or two years or whatever the time that you need until you like until you pursue your passion like until you get a like phd position somewhere but, make, but whatever the opportunity you get make use of the opportunities that's what matters like how best do you utilize the opportunity to progress in your career Instead of just being stuck there or be, being like demotivated, use the opportunity. Like learn the tools. 
because sometimes in the industries you get a, to work on best projects you get to learn tools which you may not have such oppor- when you may not have such opportunities in academia use the opportunities let's focus on your research that uh, so if you can provide some insights into your research particularly focusing on your work with uh, simulation techniques for multi physics problems and i have one additional questions in this that uh, what are the recent developments or breakthroughs in this field do you find that it's promising my work is on like developing new algorithms like finite element formulations time integration scheme uh, or like even like new elements for efficient simulation of multi physics problem primarily to like simplify the implementations i, I do not like proposing really complicated mathematical formulations that would scare away newcomers my philosophy is to simplify the formulations so that others can easily at least relatively easily understand and implement use them in that regard so what whatever what i try to propose so they should be simple and also computationally efficient so uh, get the simulation results in a much quicker manner and be accurate so on so on and i have worked i have like i have proposed formulations for electromechanics all in finite strain like nonlinear high like large strains large deformations including like dynamics bisque velocity to capture like uh, the f- mechanical deformations under different stimuli for example magnetic stimuli so if you have a soft like magnetic gripper like for example initially flat and when we apply magnetic field it deforms that that's one example so like we have significantly high deformations so how to solve these problems first of all what are the mathematical formulations cut coupling how to resolve the coupling and what is the efficient way to do so and this becomes especially important because we have the incompressible nature of the polymers so that's a added complexity on top of the actual nonlinear deformation which requires sophisticated formulations so mostly mostly i worked on mixed formulation mixed formulations are much more efficient in terms of the cost that we need to spend in tr for running a simulation compared to most other formulation that are available so what developments i mean do you see that this can be an opportunity for the future research no the opportunities are like uh, how to design d- different devices for various applications so the challenge is in designing the devices for application so we have the standard tools right and like ansi sabatras whatever so the problem is we cannot simulate multi physics directly using ansi so if you want to simulate different multi physics the user has to write their own subroutines in the form of u mat u el so there is no cap- capability itself so this is what i'm i'm doing so i am developing open source uh, simulation software so that the designers can use them to design the devices for example beat robot a dripper or for up some applications in biomedical engineering like currently we are working on like soft magnetically active like devices i said dripper and also some some other applications in biomedical engineering that's one example or like we can also extend it to other applications for example like morphine wins i just have one more question so so is it re- related with 3d printing yeah. kind of so we, yeah we ha- we, you have to start with the 3d printing so you get them you get the device with the 3d printing but who, how do you actually even start with the 3d printing so how do you know the composition that you want to mix right so in order to capture in order to get a particular shape like upon application of the fields you have to know the distribution of the particles in the in the polymer depending upon like whether you want to achieve bending or twisting or curling so you have to have some type of anisotropy built into the design when you 3d print you have to uh, align the fibers or particles in such a way that you get the required shape but how do you actually know the alignment right so in order to first even like this is like an inverse problem we know the end product and we want to know we want to know the distribution of the particle let's say some iron or molybdenum particles or some other like uh, carbon nanotubes and we want to know how to distribute them. so that's uh, that's an inverse problem but to do that first we need to have the simulation framework for forward problem in simpler terms that could you explain that what uh, mixed fo- formulations are and uh, why they are important in the context of uh, elasticity problems the standard formulation in finite element is for for the li- elasticity problems is based on displacements okay if we take a static problem so we want to know the displacement so the standard formulation or the standard formulation is based on displacements where in three dimension we have three displacements at each node okay but if you use this formulation 
for materials which are incompressible for example rubber a soft tissue so the issue uh, incompressible means their volume doesn't change after deformation so this is like a constraint on the deformation the solid has to deform but follow in the incompressibility constraint that is the volume shouldn't change this is this is like an optimization problem in order to efficiently solve this problem we introduce additional variables one of them is like a pressure hydrostatic pressure or we can also add deformation gradient itself as an unknown we can add stress the stress tensor itself as an unknown so in the mixed formulation like simply speaking in addition to displacement we have other variable which we also solve along with the displacements so this is why it is mixed so we have displacements mixed with other variables what are some practical applications or real world applications of uh, mixed formulations in the field of mechanical engineering i mean mixed formulations are, are also available in ansi or any other fe software so the primary reason behind using them is for modeling incompressible materials so whenever you have a poisson's ratio very close to 0.5 even like some 0.45 it, it's uh, important to use sophisticated formulations because the standard displacement formulation becomes in ineffective in, in the in the sense that you need to have a, a lot of load steps if, like if you run in some any simulation if you apply a load you need to have a lot of load steps that's not really efficient so when we use mixed formulations we can solve the same problem using a fewer load steps and this performance doesn't re- deteriorate as we increase the amount of incompressibility so like in the standard like ansys or abacus they these are called as hybrid formulations mostly the displacement solved together with pressure this is the simplest formulation and which is quite efficient in solving incompressible prop, like materials in elasticity so how do you solve them i mean what is the procedure of solving this problem the procedure is the same like same as how we solve is solid mechanics problem with the displacement formulation so one like we have to of course first to derive the formulation like for starting from the differential equation okay and well, then we have, we linearize it we discretize it the the difficulty is instead of having one big matrix in displacement formulation we have a like kind of black matrices for displacement and pressure so when the incompressibility is first fed that is when the poisson ratio is exactly 0.5 we have what are called as saddle point problems so which are because on the diagonal for the pressure you know, there is there are zeros so which is difficult to solve difficult to solve doesn't mean impossible so like people in the literature have come up with several methods to alleviate these issues and then solve them relatively efficient manner but even with this issue the mixed formulation is still much better in terms of accuracy robustness and efficiency than compared to many other methods like f bar b bar method like our enhanced strain formulations so as you have mentioned that it is quite more efficient so with this i have my next query is that uh, which is quite popular these days machine learning so uh, how do you how do you foresee machine learning intersecting with uh, traditional simulation technique like uh, finite element analysis and that, that's an interesting question i mean we have to see like what is the best way to use machine learning for computer aided engineering i'm saying computer aided engineering not simulations because computer aided engineering is a much wider wider like broad field than simulations so in computer aided engineering we have pre processing post processing materials material models we have to see whether it makes sense to use or whether like first we have to assess what are the benefits so my objection so far has been that people are using machine learning without much thought about whether it makes sense or not especially if trying to replace simulations like tools or solvers which is not going to work it has, that's not like that's not how machine learning works it works on database exactly it is it is a database uh, you can use machine learning if you have a really big data and you want to probe the data within whatever the data is available you can't go beyond what is what is the data so that, that's what i'm saying you have to look at machine learning and see what are the applications that is appropriate that are appropriate to use with machine learning so if you want to replace machine um, 
solve like solve was with machine learning then that is a dead end so it's not going to work so uh, when it comes to integrate machine learning algorithm into simulation frameworks so then uh, i mean what is your plan i mean how do you plan to leverage them to enhance accuracy or efficiency i i'm not a like, big fan of using machine learning for simulation so i don't work on in that aspect so either like ad, ad, like what people call accelerating simulations using machine learning first of all like it, it's it's a false thing it's not it's not correct to say accelerating simulations with, with machine learning the reason being to start with machine learning first you need the data right first you must have ra completed few years few simulations okay, even like 10 simulations to get the data for machine learning so how can you even like start of accelerating simulations with machine learning when in the first place you need to have completed the simulations to train the neural network model with machine learning so there is no question of accelerating simulations with machine learning what people usually do is you run simulations you have the data you train the machine learning model the neural network model and that model is a surrogate model not not even reduced rod model this is a surrogate model that you can use to probe the solution for some inputs within the range of the parameters that you trained so in that way you can get the sim- the result in a much faster way okay so that is fine i mean that may be fine for some applications but that is not accelerating simulation so accelerating simulations means when when i prepare a model and try to simulate it the i should get the solution in much faster way without having to run the simulations a priori so in that sense um, as you mentioned i mean uh, it is quite faster well i i don't have any idea about that method but as far as machine learning concern i know that the data training is quite time consuming exactly yeah it is not not only time consuming it is also like uh, expense um, resource intensive so you need like uh, gpus like if you are looking at uh, 3d cfd simulations you need gpus to train them so for example like simulating fluid search interaction problems is much more time consuming than compared to cfd so developing some kind of reduced order models would be efficient at least to some level of analysis it is very challenging because what because of the fact that these these problems are highly non linear again so reduced order mo- models have been there like for example using pvd like proper orthogonal decomposition they, they are perfect they work very well for linear problems or maybe mo- slightly non linear problems but once you go strongly non linear regime reduced order mod- models at least the known ones fail i'm trying to use new methods like to develop these reduced order models but when it comes to simulations there is no point of using machine learning like p- people are like hyping a lot it's not going to work because like we we discuss you, f- you need a lot of resources you need a lot of data and we are not going to get the data and people may not share the data with you so it will stay within the company like even if someone uses it it will be limited to that particular company so it is co- i mean uh, confined people are uh, people do not want to share because they maybe they have also spent money on that on that data i mean it is not freely available for that reason exactly yeah exactly because that data is for their product they have like to pay tens ip issues and all why do they want to share that model with you, with you with someone else with competitor for example so that will be even lim- li- limited and even if even if like even if someone wants to share like you can't do much with that because the design space is limited to the space trans- transcendent in the training data you cannot extrapolate beyond the design space so do you think is there any specific areas within mechanical engineering that where machine learning techniques have the potential to complete to complement existing simulation methods i i don't think so instead of saying no straight away i want people to think where would it make sense in the simulation so in the simulation we start with the model that means we have we start with the cad model would it make sense to use machine learning in the cad model like in the designs is there a database that you can make use like where you can use machine learning think about it maybe and then we go to machine from cad model to machine so can we use machine learning there for machine i don't know like we have automated measures like if you are working in automobile industry you may not need any 
sophisticated next generation automated machine is fine but when you go to other industries like nuclear or aerospace we need to have really good quality machine to capture stress gradients and all there most of the time manual work is spent in generating the meshes can we use machine learning there i don't know i don't see like how machine learning can be used instead of some kind of automation so for example you say okay we have round holes or fillets then from the geometry we can know that the, like these are the features then we can use some, some kind of automated algorithms like inflation we can get the mesh so can we replace those automation or automated algorithm with machine learning i don't think so the considering the amount of data that you need to put into uh, first of all training machine learning then we come to the simulation part like after setting up the materials and all we come to the simulation can we use machine learning for for the material database if you, if you can use what are the complications okay, let's say we can use meta- ma- machine learning for material database since machine learning is a kind of database the problem is we need derivatives like when we go to finite element simulations we need derivatives of the material like relations like stress tra- from stress strain relations we need to calculate the tangent matrix then if you have a machine learning model then we have to use auto differentiation and you know upon the complexity of the machine learning model this auto differentiation becomes much much more computationally expensive so again would it make sense i don't think so then in the running the solver once we have set up everything we have mesh we have set up the materials we have the boundary conditions and loads then the solver there is definitely there is no way that machine learning can accelerate solvers it's not going to work and then at the end post processing so finally post processing of the results would it make sense to use machine learning for post processing i don't know because i i have travel i have not really worked in such a big project where machine learning can make sense but again think of it what do we need for machine learning the data so the post processing if you want to automate it you, you can automate it easily using some scripts like python scripts or some kind of parallel parallel or bash scripts instead of machine learning because for machine learning you need the data and whatever the model you train will be limited to that particular mo- model that you are analyzing you are post processing like i explained so consider different stages of the simulation and see where it made sense to apply machine learning and do it thanks for having such an insightful explanation so could you provide some insights into your current projects and any vacancies you might have in your research team yeah currently so i'm working on developing new formulations and finite elements for like multi physics especially so now i am moving towards to shell finite elements for multi physics problems so far we have developed like 3d elements like continuum elements but now i'm moving, moving towards shell elements because if you, if you look at all the like major applications in soft robotics or shape morphing or biomedical engineering we have like devices made of thin structures for which shells elements are more appropriate so like i'm working on that that's one area and then i'm also working on integrating this soft materials with fluid structure interaction framework for simulating like for applications in biomedical if you have these devices interacting with blood flow how how would it affect so these are the i'm currently combining multi physics from the solid mechanics side and then multiply it from the fluid mechanics side and see how these different fields interact with each other to enable more like more sophisticated designs for applications in biomedical i don't have any opportunities at the moment but uh, like if anybody is interested like watch out my network so linkedin or twitter so i'll i'll post if i have any vacancy so do you have any collaborations and i mean as you mentioned that you are, you are also working on biomedical engineering so do you also have any collaborations with any medical group uh, not in that regard but i'm working i have lot, i have lot of collaborations like with experimentalists like who actually characterize you know, these you know, soft composites like in terms of their material modeling so i work to in with those collaborators and i also collaborate with uh, mathematicians so, so developing some mathematical methods not finite element method but some kind of analytical solutions for simple for simple geometries to enable easier uh, design of like structures like for example if you want to do some shape morphing like how to start so in, the, in those aspects and then validating them with the simulation framework so that that that's my collaborations at the moment 
I'm open to collaborations. Like if anybody is interested in using this simulation framework for applications in biomedical, please contact me. Thanks, Professor. So we are on the verge of the ending of our session today. So one last question is that I used to ask to all of my guests that uh, if you have any important advice or guidance for mainly for undergraduate students to those who have, uh, I mean, to those fresh PhD or just join, I mean, thinking to join right. as a PhD. So if you could share yeah. something. So my suggestion to- is talk to people. Like uh, this is, uh, I learned it the hard way. And also I learned it like from my experience. Talking to people who are already doing it or who are already where you want to reach would be certainly helpful. Don't be shy. Okay? Send emails, approach them. They may not reply. So you don't lose anything. Right. But talk to people. If, if they reply, that's a positive. We learn something. Okay. Talk to people. And also improve, try to continuously improve your skills. Like learn tools. If you are starting a freshly, a fresh PhD student, like in computational mechanics or simulation, learn tools like basic tools like Python, visualization, some basic programming, LaTeX. So these skills are quite important. And look out also for opportunities like improve your network. Thanks, uh, Dr. Channa Keshava, for uh, joining us today and uh, sharing your insightful perspectives uh, i personally enjoyed these conversations uh, immensely and i hope that uh, you did too so i believe our uh, viewers uh, mainly students will find this uh, engaging and insightful so yeah looking forward to have more insightful talks in on different topics sure. in the near future thank you thank so, you very much yeah thank you for Bye. inviting me um, i hope your audience like enjoys this conversation. If you have, if anybody have any other questions, if you want to discuss, like they can email me directly.